Every summer, scouts descend on the slums of Brazil to find kids who show talent when they're 10 years old. These kids are then brought into cities and they're trained for a decade. And when they emerge, they are the greatest athletes in the world. We scour the ends of the earth to find athletic talent because the stakes are high. Billions of dollars of revenue. And when I heard this story about how we find young athletes, I couldn't help but wonder, who is doing this for smart people? Because the stakes for finding them are pretty high too. How do we find the superstars in the rest of our society, in medicine and technology and science? In the US, the richest country in the world, we have gifted programs on a limited basis. For every $100 that we spend on education in the United States, we spend about two and a half cents on gifted programs. This means that for a small number of students, they're guided and supported, and for everybody else, their potential suffers. The richest country in the world spends a quarter of a tenth of a percent developing its top students. So suffice it to say that most such students in the world fall into the first two categories. And just to get a sense of the scale of how many people this affects, let's take a look at one other country, India. The top 25% of India's student population with the highest IQs is greater than the entire student population of the United States. This means that there are more honors students in India than there are students in the US. After thinking about all this, I came up with a theory. The theory was that finding these students and developing them would have a massive impact on the economy and on society. Now, obviously, this isn't a new theory. In fact, we already have ways of finding bright young people. But our conventional ways of finding them lead them down a path that wastes their intellect. Let's take a look at our current model for identifying talent. In many countries, intellectual measurement of high school students depends on one national exam. Students spend years of their lives improving their speed and test-taking skills for this exam. And then even when they go to college, they continue to be measured on rote learning skills that are irrelevant to the work that they will ultimately do to solve real problems. There's a mismatch between the skills we should be developing in our top students and the ones that they're spending time on. But they have to spend time on them because the only way to get noticed is to succeed in these two ways. So instead of waiting for the national exams to change or colleges to adapt, I started Brilliant to go and find these people and create a more meaningful way for them to get noticed. In order to go and attract these bright students, I started by asking the question, what do smart people like? And came up with broadly three things. Smart people enjoy being challenged. They like meeting other people who share their interests and talents, and they like having their work appreciated and understood. My team and I set out to create a place on the internet that does all of these things, and we decided to focus on STEM. We built a site where students can solve hard problems in math and science and engineering. The problems go deeper and are much more advanced than what is typically covered in school. They require creativity and critical thinking, and they're designed by people who are themselves, much like our users when they were growing up. We've also created a community around problem solving where you can not only solve the problems, you can also submit the solutions and share your process. Students interact with other students in an environment where everyone feels challenged and recognized for their work. We've been online for about six months, and we now have 80,000 users from 135 countries, and we're doubling every eight weeks. We think we'll be a million users by the end of the year. And when you look at these students and the distribution of where they're from, it's a telling sign that students who want an intellectual peer group are everywhere. We're finding them, and they're going well beyond their national exams. Here's an example. This is Pharrell, he's one of our users. 
He's 12 years old and he's from the Philippines. He's from a middle class family and neither of his parents are good at math. So he taught himself by Googling for hard math problems, which is how he found us. Last fall, we held a math competition for brilliant users and Pharrell took first place, well ahead of a 17 year old who last year got a perfect score at the International Math Olympiad. Through Brilliant, Pharrell also met a mentor, a math professor who decided to privately coach Pharrell. This mentor recognized that he was already at the level of an advanced undergraduate math major at the age of 12. He's now working on the hardest concepts he's ever encountered. Our larger goal for these students is to create the conditions in which their opportunities to succeed have, left, have less to do with chance and more to do with their individual agency and individual empowerment. Pharrell is part of a rapidly growing top quartile of students ages 12 through 22 who are enrolled in school and have, and have internet access. By 2025, this group will be 100 million students. These students have the potential to be the most innovative and productive people in the world, but only if they don't fall through the cracks. The world moves forward when people like Pharrell can apply their potential. And there's high demand for talented people, especially in STEM fields. Today, these are the top five jobs that employers are having trouble filling, and three of them are in STEM fields. If you look at these jobs, it's not hard to understand why. They're highly technical, and the job requirements are changing so fast. But the way that students are being prepared doesn't match what they'll be expected to do in order to solve real problems adapt to jobs that may not exist yet, using skills we don't yet have words for, using technologies we're still inventing to solve problems that didn't exist until recently. These are not the skills that are measured on national exams and college transcripts. The scores that students get today don't capture what they can and can't do. So Brilliant is creating a way for organizations to search for bright people based on, based on more relevant signals of aptitude. We track students' ability to think via solving complex problems. We throw at them problems that are not straightforward, that require conceptual and analytic ability. And then we also track their ability to discuss problems in groups and teach and learn from their peers. These are the kinds of skills that are relevant in today's world. And by tracking them and putting them on display, we're doing two things. Developing higher order skills in students and satisfying the need for different signals of aptitude. We're motivated to do all of these things because we know that harnessing human capital can move the GDP of entire countries. And here's an example. In 1960, Jamaica and Singapore looked very similar. Two tiny subtropical island countries, both former British colonies. They had about the same GDP per capita and the same population. Since the 60s, Singapore focused on developing its people through education while Jamaica continued to base its economy on low skills industries like agriculture, tourism, and mining. Today, Singapore is a fully industrialized country. They're a world leader in computers and electronics. They enjoy good schools and healthcare and public services. Jamaica is still underdeveloped. Their economy relies heavily on tourism, yielding a low GDP per capita. Countries that focus on developing their people are much more prosperous in the long run. Human innovation has come a long way. What leads us as a planet to be able to get to this point? What is the potential that's out there? How would the world be different if the problems we believed would take us 50 years to solve could be solved in 20 years or 10? What does it take to find and nurture the minds today that can cure Alzheimer's tomorrow? Where are they? And who are they? Chances are, they look like this. A third of the world is under 18, and most of them live in developing countries. Until now, nobody knew who they were. But over the next decade, we will find them. And they will explore the greatest frontier that is left to explore, the human intellect. Thank you.